At the end of the day, cross-site scripting, or XSS as a vulnerability class, enables you to execute JavaScript code from within the context of an affected user's browser. The purpose of this video is not to explain what an XSS is, the different types of XSSs, or how you could potentially find one. Instead, we are going to focus on a common bug bounty and capture the flag question. Okay, you found an XSS, that's great, but so what? What's the impact? But before we do, the purpose of these videos is to explain theory for a specific security topic. Once you understand the theory, you'll be able to solve relevant capture the flag problems. One of the places you can solve these problems is 247ctf.com. At the end of this video, a 247ctf challenge will be referenced, which will enable you to test your practical understanding of this topic. XSS vulnerabilities of all types are everywhere. During a typical penetration test, the gold standard XSS proof of concept is the fabled Alert1 dialog pop-up box. For somebody who technically understands what an XSS really means, the impact of this alert box is clear. An attacker can do just about anything that they like in JavaScript to the affected user. But what does anything they like in this XSS context actually mean? Well, let's run through a few examples, starting with hijacking a user session. Let's say you have identified an XSS vector and you want to gain access to someone else's authenticated application session. Depending on the application's configuration, you could abuse the XSS to demonstrate the impact by hijacking the session. This session hijack could be performed, for example, by exfiltrating cookies or associated local storage data from the end user via JavaScript to some remote server. Once you have hijacked the data, and again, depending on the application's configuration, you could then load the relevant session data into your own browser and start browsing the application masquerading as the authenticated user. What you have done is abused an XSS vulnerability to take over a user's active session and by association, their account. What if you can't hijack the session or there is no session to hijack? You could also use the XSS vector to modify the actual page the user is interacting with. For example, you could redress or redirect the user to a similar looking page as part of a second stage phishing attempt. Or you could modify the links, images or text of the underlying page on the fly. The user thinks they are interacting with or browsing the trusted application, but in reality, they are actually interacting with your clone. These types of page modification attacks can also be much more comprehensive. For example, you could abuse the XSS vector to inject a catch or logger to monitor all of the user's actions within the vulnerable application. Every click, link, message, or password entered into the application could be monitored, logged, and exfiltrated. A single XSS vulnerability has been transformed into a site-wide catch or logger. Rather than directly modifying the underlying application or gaining access to a specific account, another option is to abuse the XSS vector to force the user to perform some unintended or unknown actions. Depending on the application and context, you could perform any number of actions, such as automatically updating the user's credentials, placing some order or changing payment information, all unbeknownst to the user. Your XSS vector would be causing the user's browser to make these authenticated but unauthorized changes on the user's behalf. Once your JavaScript is running, no interaction is required from the affected user at all. Even with additional protections, such as cross-site request forgery or CSRF tokens, this attack can still be performed. An XSS gives you control of the user's session using JavaScript. That means via the XSS, you can also control all actions and behavior associated with that session. The user knows their CSRF tokens. So the XSS operating within the browser and context of that user session knows them too. You just need to modify your JavaScript to read, process, and then use the CSRF tokens as part of your impact demonstrating requests. Alert1 is great, but changing payment details is even better. The approaches we have discussed so far all work when you already know what the application looks like, which endpoints you want to focus on, and what data you want to send to those endpoints. But what if you have no clue what the application your XSS is attacking actually looks like? For example, maybe you have access as a regular user, and you want to demonstrate an XSS's impact by obtaining access to administrative functions. Or, you have discovered some blind XSS where you have no real interaction with the vulnerable application at all. You know what a regular user interface looks like, but what about an administrative interface? Well, you can abuse the XSS vulnerability to identify and uncover these unknowns within the vulnerable application 
by staging your attack. The workflow being, you could first exfiltrate the previously unknown information about the application, then further utilize this information to gain further access to these previously unknown functions and endpoints. For example, you could use your XSS payload to exfiltrate the entire application's DOM or even take a screenshot of the application. Once you have exfiltrated this data, you can identify which data and endpoints you want to further target as part of your next impact-proving XSS payload. Beyond the direct application itself, you can also abuse your XSS vector to expand your attack surface. For example, the XSS can be used to perform additional reconnaissance on the browser, then based on that information, launch a direct attack against the browser itself in an attempt to gain remote code execution on the underlying system thereby breaking out from the limited XSS and JavaScript jail. Your impact has now moved beyond the application itself and demonstrates how additional vulnerabilities can be chained together as part of a larger compromise attack chain. With a similar end goal, you could also prompt the end user to download and execute an additional payload. For example, pretending to be a specific browser extension required to interface with the application. The end user will see this semi-reasonable request coming from a legitimate website they trust and interact with. Why not download and install it? Additionally, the XSS can be used to identify additional applications and services in an attempt to move laterally. For example, by performing an internal port scan or attempting to access additional endpoints or previously unknown services directly via JavaScript. The final impact is now moving even further away from the initial XSS vector, but the underlying root cause remains the same which is, at the end of the day and with a security focus, an XSS is always bad and should be avoided and remediated. Alert1 conceptually demonstrates this fact. The underlying impact is only really limited by an attacker or CTF author's imagination. At the 247 CTF, you can practice this theory yourself. The challenge, helicopter administrators in the web category, will reward you with a flag if you can abuse an XSS vector to gain access to information only accessible and known by an administrative user. If you have any thoughts on this topic or requests for future videos in this Capture the Flag fundamental series, be sure to let us know in the comments section below.